and then you couldn't, again, for whatever reason, you couldn't talk about the 2020 election, 2020 election. And then at the end of 2023, they rolled that back for good reason, because think about it, everyone's going to be re referencing this year, the 2020 election, which they did. And so it's like, if we don't do this, we're going to be banning channels constantly, you know, pe first timers that, that reference it, and it, it would just be a nightmare for the, um, the algorithms. So they rolled it back. Now, what happens this year? Well, I mean, I can talk about this year. I've, I've talked about it for weeks and months and nobody says anything because it's all speculation right now until it happens. But it is going to be, it is going to be historic. You, you wait. I, I, I will make, I, I will make predictions for you. Anyway. I've heard that there's a, a tsunami uh, coming your way. A what? A tsunami. What, oh, a, a tsunami? Yeah. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, but yeah, you don't pronounce the T. Um, of immigrants at the Mexican border? I, it is one of the possibilities, which is, um, if you remember, you might be old enough to remember the uh, the movie Red Dawn, the original one with Patrick Swayze and, and, and um, Charlie Sheen and those guys. That was the opening premise of the show, which they didn't even talk about. They just glossed over it, which was that the whole Red Dawn scenario was that the United States, if you want to attack the United States, it's not a big secret, by the way. If you can do it, you cut up through Mexico and Canada and try to split the country in two at the, at the Colorado, at the Rockies. And... Well, again, we can we can talk about it. So, what, are yeah. are we officially starting? I mean, I'm assuming yeah, everything's yeah, recorded okay. anyway. Let, let, let's <clears throat> talk about something completely different, then. Sure, um, sure, go ahead. Whatever you want to talk about. Um, personally, I, I I had a look at it today, and um, I, I um, the language thing about flat Earth is is very very strong because unless you learn the language, you'll never understand what flat earth is about right and so the first thing is, is learning the language little things like um what is it uh the the uh oh it's gone completely out of my head that's right <laughs> Some, something about the solar system like well i mean there's there's verbiage for example the, the reason why flat earthers can't be infiltrated you know there's never we have never had a content creator that was a troll right that was a um that was a, a you know it, they're very obvious you you were either for flat earth or you're against flat earth and no one has ever in in nine years snuck in pretended to be flat earth and then went the other way you know what i mean so because you can't and, and we i've seen this at conferences what you were talking about the verbiage the language so you'll like the one of the easiest one of the dead giveaways is if they use the word round you can tell if, it, if anyone uses the word round it's one of the first things you learn which is we don't we don't say round we see ball we see globe we see sphere you know round could be a dinner table it could be a hubcap it could be a uh, you know a dinner plate and once you learn it you done you know it's it's almost impossible to forget um or you know heliocentric or anything <clears throat> regarding the solar system or the curvature of the earth or the coriolis effect or uh gravity or the you know the vacuum or the, the vacuum of space or um you know anything regarding the planets all the the language we use the combination of the language can't be faked for whatever reason, if you don't believe in flat earth, you have a really hard time rolling those terms off your tongue and, and creating sentences and paragraphs and trying to sound authentic. And again, the, the, the people, when, when, when we do conferences, it's funny because every once in a while someone will show up there and when they're talking, in fact, I'll, I'll give you an even better example. We were doing parties we still we still are we do meetups down in los angeles at this beach house and there we have doormen people at the door that instead of asking for like a passphrase you know it's like you know normally you know to get into like a club it's like you know you, you give a passphrase it's like you know, do you know any good white basketball players and the other guy says there are no good white basketball players you know something like that and then no but that's not what we say we say something like so what's your what's your favorite thing about flat earth if you're not into flat earth, 
you don't have a favorite thing. You can't, and you cannot make up one on the fly. And, and that's how we let people in the door for, for those, for those gatherings. And it's, it's fascinating to me. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. I ramble. Okay. So, so the, the, the words I was looking for was atmospheric deck of opacity. There you go. Which, which if you don't understand, if, if you haven't really, you know, thought about it, it means nothing. Right. You know? It's word salad. Right. Atmospheric right. deck of opacity. What the hell is that? Are are you a Nathan Oakley guy? Um, n no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Um, I don't really follow anyone specifically apart from Witsit and ah. and uh, Jaron. Yeah, sure. And I was going to say the 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 deck of opacity sounds like something Witsit would use. But I've also heard, if I'm not mistaken, I think I've heard Nathan Oakley say it. So that's why I had to ask. Oh, it 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 came from David Weiss. If if you if you watch that video I sent you, yeah, we talk about it there. Yeah. Right, it, right. He, You're right. David David uses it. He hasn't used it as much as he uses other things. But if he if the interview goes long enough, yes, he will use it. Good point. Yeah. So so the language thing is very important. And somebody said something um, on the internet, which was which was spot on. Um, they were arguing with with a, a, a hardcore uh, globy guy, and he he just he just uh, he just wrote, "Look, flat Earth is a club, and you're just not in it." Yeah, and <clears throat> I think that about sums it up. It's 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 like. Um, it's like alpine skiing. It's not everybody's cup of tea, yeah. Not everybody wants to do it. And uh, uh, another another good analogy would be like uh, that they, they call it uh, spelunking. Cave, yeah, cave cave diving. Cave diving, yeah. Now that's something that not a lot of people are into. It's kind of no. dangerous and it's underground and it's it's a it's a it's a rabbit hole. Right. But it's great. Yeah. If yeah. You, if you can get into that sport, if you can get into that club, then you're onto a winner. Right. Yeah. However, yeah. flat Earth tends to be a little more because it's a mystery. People are drawn to it, like like any other conspiracy, right? Any other rabbit hole. But it's different in that it's so big and so ridiculous in terms of scope right again it hits people in the face so hard you know the the five stages of acceptance it's one of the few conspiracies where the five stages of acceptance is almost default right where first of all, it's like there is no way that thing could be real right followed by i'm pissed off that you're even bringing it up to me followed by it's like well maybe this part's true but what about this followed by there's no you know the depression and then finally acceptance and yeah. it it tends to again you can't tell with any given person how long it's going to take i've seen people flip uh in less than an hour mostly women which is weird uh but they are more, more open-minded i guess uh and i've seen some people take months i mean hell i i took eight nine months and wow. but it was different for me because i didn't have a lot of content to go off of nowadays most people i think the average is less than a month it, uh, on their own, own quietly it's not like they announce it to people when it when it happens you know like difference would be like owen benjamin who uh, you know you, i'm sure you know did it live you know did live streams and you could see his brain melting in real time which was which was wonderful to see and very very rare uh the most people do it quietly at home and even when they even when they get it they don't talk about it um there was a wonderful compilation by a channel called um robot polisher he just put it out there uh, where he was showing different celebrities. And the fun thing was the uh, American football. They were interviewing one of the American football guys. And he was saying, look, he goes, I'm not kidding. He goes, he goes you, if you did an anonymous poll, anonymous, in any American football locker room, he goes, 15% of that locker room is flat earth. Hang and on, about 15 or 50? 15, 15. Which is which is amazing again. It's pretty amazing considering what you're what you're looking at there, but with American sports, it does not surprise me because they have a lot of downtime, 
Right? You know, these guys are traveling a lot. I mean, especially the, I, I would think there'd be more with like baseball teams and basketball teams because they're traveling even more. I mean, baseball's traveling constantly and they have a lot of time in their hands. And now it's like, what, what do we do? Do we watch a movie or do we watch some YouTube rabbit hole? And I mean, that's how Kyrie got into it. And, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving basketball yeah, the, some, some years ago. There are lots of uh, sports sportsmen that have come out saying, yeah, the earth, the earth is flat. Yeah. Yeah. It Yo. doesn't, it doesn't take much to do. Uh, to, to convince somebody if they have the right frame of mind going in. Sports guys, I, I think, are pretty much open-minded. Plus, sports guys are, are su superstitious by default. It's weird, right? They, they've got, so they're more, I think, open-minded as opposed to uh, someone who's got their, um, again, if you have a bachelor's, I don't know what it is over in, in the UK, but you, if you have a bachelor's degree in a physical science, or a master's degree in anything, and forget about a PhD, um, you're way more resistant just because of the conditioning. And, you know, I go, look, if you have a, a bachelor's in geology, you're probably not going to get into this anytime soon. Uh, I was and, speaking to a guy um, I contacted through LinkedIn. He's yeah. got a PhD. He's an engineer. Yeah. And I, I wanted to know what his sort of opinion was on, on flat earth. And he said, well... Um, at the end of the interview, he said, well, there's about um, there's as much um, possibility that is flat that is a globe. So he was on the fence, but it, at least he was saying he, he said he's been following it since 2014. Yeah. Which is even before you started. I think. Right. Yeah? Right. That would have been in the Matt Boyle and Eric Dubay. Yeah. 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 And. And why, and I would think a lot of scientists would be curious about it privately. I'm a little, a little surprised he talked about it openly with you. Um, because the peer groups, when you get up of that high of academic level, are very, very strong. Um, one of the scariest words ever in the academic world is ostracized. Which is, once you get up there, all you care about is your circle of people and being published. And, you know, every, the occasional grant money thing. That's that. That's a whole other level, and so when you reach that point, do you know? Like like anything, it's like in clicks in school. You know, when 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 a group thinks something is cool and you don't, or you think something is cool and they don't, peer pressure is an amazingly powerful thing. And I, the I had that in, in, when I was taking my masters, in fact, um, because I didn't really agree with the the professor, um, and he. He wasn't too happy about the way I was doing things. And he, he said, look, this is your last chance to come back into the fold. There you go. And, you know, if, if, I, if I'd have sort of um, knuckled down, I wasn't capable of knuckling down because I couldn't see the things the way that he did. Yes. Right. My common sense was against what he was talking about. Right. Yes. Um, and he didn't like the idea that science was more open than than uh, than closed. Yes. So, yeah. So it, it was it was difficult. So I didn't get a master's, but um, I, I did get a very good uh, first year. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I understand. Don't, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I can see the other side, which is there's an old saying, which is conformity builds empires. And it does. If, if most of the people did not conform to at least the, the basic structure of society and the basic ideas, then it would be chaos and it, and it would fall apart. However, in this case, yeah, it changes things, but but and because people will say, well, you know, why would you hide it? What's the biggest reason why you would hide it? And you know, lots of people say, well, you know, it's power and control and and stuff like that. And I've been fond of saying, well, yeah, but in our case, it's it's more bad timing than anything else because we didn't even figure it out, not for sure, until about 1960. And then the question is, if society's already built, you know, everything's everything's pretty much laid out, all the borders are drawn, and, and the infrastructure is the way you want it. Do you mess that up, potentially? Well, and... the 1960s is, is very quick, really, because when you think about the Antarctic Treaty only came into effect 
in 59. Right. Yeah. So, right. So, so that's sort of, hang on, what's going on? Yeah. So that's, that's amazingly fast in the yeah. 60s, really. Yeah. Yeah. And it is not that long ago. The sixties was not that long ago, but I but I get it. Which is, do you you know do you take the risk and tell the people in nineteen sixty you know what what you pretty much think think things are, or do you hold on to it? I mean, that, come on, that's that's power one hundred and one. Which is you hold on. I mean, that's information is power. Always has been. Um, uh, it's the most valuable thing that's out there because you can do so much with it. And it's like, no, we're going to hold on to this for as long as we can, and then we're going to figure out what to do with it. To where you know to where it benefits us the, the most. I totally get it. I, I I have been fond of saying for years. I said, look, if 1960, would I have told if I would have sat it on that Illuminati meeting, would I have you know raised my hand? It's like I disagree. No, I would have said, nope, good move. Don't tell him. And and the reason I say that is because um, of the Roswell thing. You know, the Roswell thing was 1947, right? And when that first remember television really wasn't a thing in 1947 so that was just radios and newspaper when that started circulating around the country and it went fast there was panic there was there were people getting starting to ramp up going oh this could be something amazing and that's when the you know the pentagon of course when they figured out you know two three days later you know it's like wait a minute what the hell's going on in new mexico get somebody on the phone now and they had to walk that thing back fast. In fact, back walking back, ran it back fast. You know, oh no, it's a weather balloon. We're going to throw. Uh, it, it probably was just a, a weather balloon. No, are you are you saying that sarcastically? Or are you? Uh... Oh yeah, it probably was. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I'm, uh, no, thinking about. Oh, do you do you actually believe it was a weather balloon? Well, when when I think about it. The way they lie and, and and they go back on their lie and uh, there's sort of a double lie and a double cross and everything. You it, think, uh, hang on, uh, it might have just been a weather balloon. It there is of course the possibility that it was a double double. Yes, absolutely. Where they set up the story to see what the public would do. However, I'm a big believer in good writing, and the writing if if that was the case, the writing was too good. Meaning. If you if you've never seen the TV movie that was made on it uh, in the 1990s called Roswell with uh, Kyle MacLachlan and uh, Martin Sheen and some others, um, it was brilliant. Which was everyone responded the way you would think, which was a farm. Remember New Mexico in the 40s, pretty empty. By the way, it was there was not much going. In fact, I I don't know when New Mexico became a state. But it, there was not much happening in New Mexico. So when a farmer goes out on his land and sees just a freaking swath of damage, and he knows full well that there's an Air Force base in town, you know, not that far away, and he goes into town and goes straight, straight to the sheriff's department. It's like, will you tell those Air Force such and such to stop doing test flights and clean up the sh shit that's on my lawn, right? Yeah. The sheriff's department goes out there. They don't know what to make of it. They go back to the, the Air Force you know, base and then they go back out and the Air Force base is like, are we testing something that, you know, it's not yeah. from our base? Where the hell? There's, so, al there's always the other possibility, you know, uh, they say, was it ours or was it theirs? Was it one of our flying saucers or was it really a UFO? Sure, sure. Yeah. But so, in 19... Now, in I, 19 I, I, I know someone who, who back in the 60s says yeah. he's he saw in the middle of London a UFO flying over him. Yeah. And everybody, 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 or a whole group of people in London saw that the, the um, UFO flying out, you know, the lights and it was so quiet and everything. Right. And okay. So that could have been one of ours. It could have been a balloon. It could have been something completely different. Sure. Yeah. Sure. In in so, in the nineteen in the nineteen sixties, yes. Do I think you know they started reverse engineering things immediately? You bet. Um, but in nineteen forty seven, no. Uh, it was it was too new. Uh, we weren't. Come on, World War Two had just ended, and our tech was not 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 very good. Um, however, that being said, do I think you know I'm I'm 
big believer in all sorts of different things. But do I think that the Germans got a hold of their, they, did they have a Roswell moment in the mid thirties and reverse engineered stuff and then proceeded to use it, you know, for their, for their war machine, you know, going into world war two, I'd buy that in a second. Their tech was, their stuff was so, so good compared to ours. I mean, the fact, come on, they were, the fact they were flying jets at the end of world war two, one flew over my, my, uh, my grandfather's artillery group when he was over there and he goes he goes men were crying because they didn't know what to make of it they're like what the hell you know what are we going to do against this isn't there video footage of um a group of ufos flying over the white house there is it's not I, i'm not going to say it's not credible but it's so grainy um and of course you know there was uh the you know, you can look up. Blues. Yeah, might might have been the battle for Los Angeles. That was actually more interesting to me. You know, the, the UFO flew off the um, the Los Angeles coast during during the World War II, and because everyone thought it was an enemy craft, you know, they were they were shooting, you know, firing anti aircraft at it all day, weren't doing anything. Um, the the little the, or or how, how let's do something basic. How about the Foo Fighters? Right, the uh, where the band where the band got its name, right, which was orbs, little small glowing, we call them drones of their day, right, bladeless drones that were flying and following both bombers from Allied and Axes, right, and both sides thought it was the other guys. It's like I don't know what's chasing us, but apparently it doesn't have weapons, and so you know both sides are like, well, somebody's got something. But do I think it was you know them probably? Yeah. Well, Why not? Yeah. Was it was it made on Earth or, or was it made in China? Yeah. Well, China, well, come on, China. You you know full well that China's tech. I mean, come on. My my grandparents. I remember when they went to China in 1980, back in the day, and <laughs> there was still an awful lot of bicycles in yeah, China. Yeah. If if, if 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 they actually find a, a ufo now i wouldn't be surprised if on the bottom it had made in china on it I, if you find if you find one now sure sure why not anyway but yeah there do i believe in ufos yes do i think they're from mars or venus or jupiter no um uh, i think they're either in here with us or, or they're from other versions we've of, of definitely this. got the technology to do that right from yeah tesla. Right, right from tesla's day yeah. the what from from tesla oh yeah well, okay yeah. yeah well tes yeah tesla tesla is one of those guys where i almost think that i i almost think he was he was a hacker of his day i mean i don't think he was supposed to be here he was way way you know the stuff that you know i'm sure if you've read stuff on him the stuff that he was coming up with it wasn't ahead of his time it was light years light years past past i mean come on an earthquake machine that was smaller than a, a the cell phone an actual ray gun that he took the white house and and torched a sheep with it and they're like yeah we, we what do you want us to do with this we can't let this thing out yeah you know um yeah or or wireless you say he was ahead of his time but if he had simply a clairvoyant connection there you go yeah sure he had um, he had access to think stuff. ESP extrasensory perception. Yeah, that, he, that. he he was way. I mean, come on. The when the the stories and I totally believe it that when he died, the government came in and just emptied his apartment. Why wouldn't you? In fact, I would tell people it's like when he dies, we we get everything, everything right now. In fact, a little side story really fast. Um, um, one of my favorite stories, a lot of people don't know, there's a wonderful little photograph of, of these two, was uh, he was friends at the end of his life um, with Mark Twain. And one of my favorite stories of all time is, is an unpublished, never got published, but the, the raw manuscript script was, was out there. It's called Mysterious Stranger by Mark Twain. And it's a fascinating little book. Uh, I think was kind of inspired by the 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 dark side, you know, because Mark Twain was a humorist. Yeah, you know, he he wrote pretty upbeat stuff, and this yeah, one was amazing. about yeah. the it was about the the devil going to Europe. I think it was in the 1500s and mm -hmm. 
talking with children and giving children lessons on how the world really works by showing how he tempts adults and, you know, like cutting them deals. You know, the basically, you know, the the whole the the devil cutting somebody a deal and all these different deals and how they went down. It's like, wow, so, so interesting. But anyway, I think it, I think it was partially inspired by Twain hanging out with Tesla. Well, I've, I've got a nice Mark Twain quote for you. Oh, please. OK. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yep. One of my one of my favorites. And it is that is a timeless quote that is used in journalism today. It is it is never changed, which is every producer will tell you I have talked. I mean, come on, the things I've been doing over the last 10 years, I have learned a lot when it comes to media, uh, how things work, which is it doesn't matter what the truth is. What does the public want to hear? What does the public want to see? It's like if it's a boring story, but it's factual, who cares, right? The The public wants drama. The public wants controversy, um, which is why I, I've been criticizing, which I, why I haven't watched American football in years, for example, which is especially over here when it's tougher to do with normal football, your football, which is when there's enough money in a certain sport, when it gets up to certain money levels, it's not about the sport anymore. It's about the money and it's about the audience. So the audience doesn't want to see the best team at the end in the finals. They want to see the most interesting team at the finals. They want to see the most dramatic. They want to see showmanship. Uh, they, they don't want to see um, uh, the Detroit Pistons. They want to see Michael Jordan. They want to see LeBron James in the final. It's one of the, it's one of the oldest things. And, and come on, sports, when it comes to, to, to your point, I mean, come on, sports have been rigged ever since they could be rigged. Going back to the old, old days of boxing. Boxing was one of the early, early, earliest sports ever to rig. Come on, a rigged boxing match? How, how can you prove it? You can't. It's almost impossible to do. And what? And because that wouldn't happen. Do you, do you think that uh, rigging sports has, has been going on longer than rigging elections? No, I think they're hand in hand. You're absolutely right. Rigging elections Cause, cause is, but, but, but rigging here. elections, rigging elections is a little different. Rigging sports is to how much money you can get out of the audience. Rigging elections is just power plays behind the scenes and they don't care what the public wants. They, they that is just power players doing what they do. And, and you're right, but you're right, which is the best candidate rarely wins in elections. It's who's got who's got the connections, who's got the money behind them. What I've heard is that we haven't had a a, uh, a good election since maybe since the sixties. Sure. Oh, wait. In your place, in in UK or the Americas? Well, perhaps all over the world. Probably. Yeah. I mean, the you're you're right. Here's a, here's a great quote for you. So a lot of people don't know that John John Kennedy wasn't supposed to win in in the 60s right it was supposed to be richard nixon the first time a young richard nixon ran against him and lost and there's a great quote um credit to i think it was joe kennedy uh his father who was you know made up his money through bootlegging during prohibition and the line was because jack was it's like why why are you watching the election numbers so closely and his father says because i'm not paying for a landslide which was a great line, which is like, we don't have to have a blowout. All you have to do is win. Who, it's like, why? Who, if, who said that? Who? Uh, John, John Kennedy's dad. Year, years later, it, 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 it kind of filtered out there because they were supposed to build this empire, which was, it was supposed to be, um, the oldest son was Joseph. He was supposed to be president first, then Jack, then Bobby. And, and his dad actually had a really good formula. He's going, oh, okay. He's going, you want to be president? First off, he goes, you want the easiest way? Be a war hero. Doesn't matter if you're a real hero, but you do have to serve and you got to get over there. And so he went over to England, Joseph, to be one of those American fighter pilots, you know, because we sent American fighter pilots over to, to fight during the first parts of the war. He got shot down. He died. 
And so it's like, all right, Jack, you're up. So, you know, Jack, Jack had to do his thing, but he was in, I think it was the Navy. There was a, you know, he supposedly rescued some guys in some Navy thing. I don't know if it was true. Doesn't matter if it was true because the story, uh, power perceived is power achieved. And that's, you know, then, then he became president, but that didn't end well, as you know. And then um, Bobby was supposed to come in right behind him. Bobby, who was attorney general. And then Bobby, uh, but they, but they, that was the message, you know, Jack dying was a message to Bobby. It's like, don't even think about it. So when Bobby just announced it at the podium, right, you know, at this hotel, he didn't even make it out of the hotel. It's like he was walking through the kitchen and he was just machine gunned down. It's like, oh no, by some terrorists. Like, really? Wow, that was fast. So yeah, elections. Uh, uh, and again, do you want, do you want to get into this one? The one that's coming up here in four weeks? I think that's probably safely in in trump's hands now isn't it well that's just it that's what that's again the, okay that your response right there is perfect because that's what they want everyone to think it's like four, the four years ago never happened four years ago it's like what do you mean he's like joe biden who wasn't even supposed to be the candidate but they couldn't come up with anybody better they bring him in he becomes the most voted president in the history of the United States, more votes than anyone ever in history, right? Even though when we went to bed that night, and I think it was different for you guys because you guys were long asleep, but over here it was like, oh, no, no, Trump was winning the five, five big five swing states. It was over. It was done. We get up the next morning, he lost. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're, yeah. Like, we're yeah. looking around going, what, what happened, right? A postal votes. Right, right, all that crap. And so people got really, really angry. And it's like, well, he'll get it this time, right? And then Biden waits till the last second. He drops out because there's no time to run primaries. They bring in Kamala, who never won a primary. And immediately within like three days after her, you know, being like, well, well she's a candidate, three days, she's already ahead. And, and it's yeah. like, what? But now in the last week, 10 days it's like oh no trump's surging ahead how? how how is he surging ahead what what changed in the last 10 days what because of the debate no because of some statements she made no what why why it is straight up propaganda you i'm i'm calling this one which is that night i'm not i'm not kidding you i'm very passionate about this because i don't because i don't vote um is that it will be the first contested election in american history meaning we've had this we've had 58 this will be the 59th election right and we're not as old as you guys right so we've only had 58 59 elections and up until now if you don't know what a contested election means meaning whoever wins the other guys got to say oh, okay i concede you won right it is all is never ever gone any differently because politicians like you know they're pressured you know they're bought and sold and so they're it's like okay you have to concede right and everybody concedes even Trump conceded last time, right? Or did he? Well, he did. Uh -huh. He he did, but officially, well, it's it's supposed to go through the the vice president, Mike Pence. From what I've heard, from what I've heard, Trump never really left office. He just steps aside. He 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 he, he puts some. I, I don't know if if you've been watching uh, that guy. Uh, rattlesnake trap i think i've seen some of his stuff yeah he talked about I... all, all the all the um executive orders that trump put into place before he you know before he stepped into his um mari lago uh place right 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 yeah. i've and, and i've so, so he, he he left apparently he left as um commander-in-chief yeah. and uh Biden was was taking an empty office, right? Because America is bankrupt. Right. I heard this as well. However, my qualifier, I said, okay, yeah, I, I see where you might, you know, the whole five D chess thing, where four D chess, that the supposedly Trump was coming oh, up with five D, yeah, yeah, five D, whatever. Does it doesn't matter? It's all crap because I said I go, that's fine, but if the inauguration happens, then it's over. 
and and the inauguration came went off without a without a hitch and and nothing nothing changed and then here we are four years later yeah and but even even that is contested because of a a, a, a gun salute that was supposed to be for, for the new president and it wasn't sure. it wasn't a gun salute it was a, a funeral uh salute yes uh, yeah, I, I, no, I got you. So there's all sorts of things going on. I, I got you. I got you. Do I personally, and of course, you are entitled to your opinion on this. However, <laughs> okay, so this is part two. I just, just to, to, this is part two. So okay. just to, um, just to finish off where we were. Right. Um, now I, I did an interview about a month ago with a lady in in America, right? And she's become the the governor of Kansas or, or something like that. Yeah, uh, for the old republic. So the old republic is ready to start up. It, it's all in place. And sure. So we'll it see what happens. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. All I can tell you is it's going to be contested. Both sides will be accused of cheating. It will not be decided by Wednesday morning, you know, November 6th. And it will be the first time ever that it will be legally challenged, meaning both sides will say they have president-elect. And sorry, just to finish off the Trump thing. You know, for anyone that says, oh, Trump did this all and he's working behind the scenes and blah, blah, blah. Like, then why did he lose? And if what and if he loses again, why did he lose again? You tell me he has all this power to run the government like a like a puppet master, but he can lose an election? No. Well, nope. you you you've heard of the final experiment. Oh, you want to talk about that? Yeah. No, I I no, I was just going to say that this could be the final election. No. Nah. Well, <laughs> as as much as I don't want to quote because he didn't come up with it, Elon Musk. I could talk a whole day on on that guy. Um. It's not, it, it might, all right, I will say this, and, and, and I didn't talk about this, I'm making a video on it next week, a little 60 second TikTok, but here's why it's so significant, which is if they figure out how to make her win, right, to where it's actually going to, you know, actually win the election where, where the media calls, it's like, we, you know, we declare that Kamala is the, the president, the Republican Party is done, and and that's not that's not hyperbole, right? It is or hyperbole is not the right word. It is not an exaggeration. It meaning and what I mean by that is if you can take a candidate that came out of nowhere, right, the last minute and make her president, then you can make anyone president, which means the blue team then you know the the what's the the saying it runs the table at that point. Republican the the red team is useless. They're, they they there's nothing they can do. They they they're done, which is why people are saying you can't it's it's I called this some months ago and I basically said it's for all the marbles. It this is an all or nothing deal. Whoever wins this runs the show. And both sides know it. We we become so polarized here that that's that's it, it I know it sounds like drama but it's not. Uh, blue team and red team has have become so polarized that uh, beforehand, like you could go to parties here, you know, for decades and decades, like Republicans and Democrats in the same party. No one is like, oh, yeah, we just agree on this and this and who cares, right? Now, they won't even go to the same parties. They won't even sit next to each other at restaurants if if they know who they are. So it's it's bad. It's so, really, so, really bad. So, so what, so, what yeah. do you think the odds are? I'm talking about the odds, as in betting odds. Yeah. Kamala or Kamala will win fair and square. None. None. But at the same time, no, it will not be. It will not be a fair election from either side because both sides, the, the stakes are so high that I challenge any Republican to be like, look, if you could cheat. To guarantee an election win, would you do it? Twenty years ago, they'd be like, "Nah." Now, oh yeah, you bet they would. Which is why I mean, it would not surprise me if all of a sudden 
there were conflicting reports of of um, I'm not saying that like Texas would go blue or anything like that or or California would go red, but it wouldn't surprise me if Fox News was giving different results than NBC or ABC or CBS or, or those guys where or there, there were states flipping to a different color that shouldn't be. And surprising, you know, if you hear that term more than once in the evening, it's like, wow, this is a big surprise. Well, then, you know, something's up. So I think both sides are going to are going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at this and uh, and then see and then and then it's going to go to court. And who knows what's going to happen to that? But the, the big thing, wow. sorry, I don't want to drag this out. The, here's the big point. The big point is it's bigger than America, which is I'm a big believer that the new world order can't really get going until america is knocked down a peg i mean a seriously knocked down and the only way you can do that is from within so if for example november 6th we don't have a clear winner and it doesn't look like we're gonna have a clear winner at that point um america is rudderless right we don't have a, a def you know we have two people claiming to have won and until the inauguration which is in january of the the following year You've got this window to where, God, let's face it. If you were an enemy of the United States, someone we've been slapping around for a while, yeah. you want an opportunity, that would be it. America you... becomes a no man's land. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's well, what do, do you remember that photo op that Trump did when he first came into office uh, and he was sat, sat in the Oval Office? And on one side of him, I think it was on the on the right side, he had nine generals all lined up, yes, because the yeah. military is on his side. Right, right, nine, right. Nine generals. And on the other side, I think it was 11 colonels. Right. I do remember what, this. What was said at the time was, this is a silent message. 9-11 were coming after the people who did that. Hmm. Yeah. That was uh, again. That was we, the photo op and the story that I got. Would it would it surprise me at all if we descended into? Um, well, I mean, come on, the movie that was called Civil War, which came out what this year. Um, would it surprise me if we descended into that? Not really, although it's different than the old one. You know, the 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 blue and gray that we did back in the day, because that was you know one half of the country versus the other half of the country. The, we're so divided now. I don't. I don't know how it play out. Nobody does for sure. We don't. We don't know how from, bad it would. From what I've heard, yeah, Trump is doing everything he can to avoid a civil war, and um, that's why. That's why there's uh, been no martial law on the street. But uh, as far as I know, the the uh what what they call it the uh the home guard yes yeah. has been on alert for a couple of years now sure. um, and i i don't know i don't know the truth of it i've heard stories so so uh, yeah, i'm only going off of hearsay so uh, yeah it's I all mean, and that's using the national guard yeah no don't, don't give me yeah no everybody's confused because you don't don't know how it's going to go. You, nobody and knows exactly how it's going to be. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the part. National Guard we have, unfortunately, America is a very big place. It's really spread out. It's more spread out than people understand. It's like, yeah, we've got major cities, but we've got lots of territory. National Guard doesn't even have a fraction of the of the troops needed to. They can they can hold the major cities. That's it. Even even your smaller cities, you know, you, there just aren't enough resources to go around. So I'm curious. I can't wait to see how this plays out. But then again, it's easy for me to say because I'm on an island in the northwest corner near Canada. Yeah. So I'm I, I'm going to be watching. But I can see Seattle from here. You know, it's it's you know, it's visible. And it's like 30 miles away. So curious. It's, curious. it's not hidden by the curve. Funny enough, it's not. It's weird, right? It's not hidden by the curve. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, one one of the things that I did want to bring up was um, yeah. 
was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yes. Um, the, the the movie. Well, the movie, yes. Uh, everything, everything about okay. it. everything okay. about it. Um, because when when I was teaching, a, yeah, a, a part of learning a new language, uh, and we're learning a, a new language with with uh, with Effie with Flat Earth, yes, um, right. Part of learning the the new language w was learning new words, yes, and. Snow White is is a wonderful example of how light works and how frequencies work, because you have white Snow White passing through a prism, and you have seven uh, smaller lights, if you like, coming out of it, which are oh. which which are violet, yellow, red, orange, green, indigo, and blue. Yeah, not in that order. Yes. Okay. But the seven dwarves are supposed to correspond to those colors. Yes. Yeah? So, so this this is one of the lessons I would do in my classes it, when I was teaching. You know. So what what color would Doc be? Yeah. What color would Grumpy be? Yeah. So I was trying to get my my students on the frequency of these colors because those. Right. Those colors are very important in the scheme of things. Um, they they say you can divide the digestive system into seven parts, each corresponding to a color of the rainbow. Right. Um, and so after talking to you and talking about the language, I, it struck me that um, – Flat Earth must correspond to those seven levels as well. Yes. So, um, for instance, you would have firm firmament, stars, sun, moon, waters, earth, and seasons. Yes. Sure. Um, and that would make up the 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 white light, if you like, so that you can actually see the flat Earth. Um, and I wondered if if you would if you would be able to um because knowledge you can also have knowledge in these colors, yes? Yeah. And so flat earth, you can divide flat earth up into seven components. Now I was quite interested that uh, you have the five top um the, the five top uh, evidences of flat earth I've, right. I've seen you talk about that yeah so do you think you could give uh seven evidences that correspond to those colors yes if i if i took some time i probably could it, it'd right. be a little bit of a stretch for some of the colors but i but i think i could pull that off yeah sure yeah okay i think it could be done okay so for instance uh, red, um, the red color we 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 can say is intensity, right? Uh, stamina, vigor, yes. Reason, clarity, and order. So, so what what sort of evidence do you think would fit those words for red? Ooh. See the 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 intensity and and well, I'd probably just go off the color. To be honest, um, if I was going to do red, I, I, it sounds a bit cliche, but uh, I'd probably go with the sunset for red and the intensity of the sunset itself and how uh, it can't punch through the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, another thing about red is robotic. So mm. a clock in the sky. Sure. The, the sky clock. Sure. Yeah, that yeah. would fit with red as well. Yep. yep. Yes. And then, of course, you have orange. Uh, oh man, orange is is a bit different. It it talks about research, researching for the next bit of the puzzle, for instance. Right. About purpose and um, joining things up. Yes, we're talking right. about the frequency of 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 the 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 color. Yeah. And so, do you, joining things up. 
Um, I'd go with the eclipse on that one. Uh, the the sun and the moon, supposedly, supposedly, you know, according to science, how they meet together in the sky. Yeah, meeting things up. Yeah. Okay, so how about blue? Now this this one is to do with sensitivity and peace. Um, nerves. It can be jittery. Yes, it's about nature regulating. Oh, that's that's too yeah. obvious. That's that's too easy. It's it's yeah. It's absolutely the water and all the forms of it. Sometimes the water is is dead calm. Sometimes it's jittery. You know, with with light wind. Uh, it's nature. It's all those things, and and it is the number one thing that we use is water. As you know, I didn't tell everybody to go to the beach and start looking off into the distance with long distance cameras, but uh, most of the people that get into our our circles, that's how they get it. Yeah, like uh, ships going over the horizon. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Lighthouses and buildings, and yeah. Okay, so we're on to yellow. Yes. Okay. And this this uh this is uh relaxed. It's you know it's kind of chill out. It's soft, but it's joining emotions. Yes, and mm -hmm. there's sort of a higher emotion and a lower emotion. A higher emotion is like singing songs in church. Yes, that would be. Oh hard. yeah, yeah. The... So so. so uh, how about this one for yellow? yellow yellow would go to the religious aspect of it which is god uh which is you know i i did one of the clues called they are hiding god and yellow is the the one of the overarching themes which is if it was built then it was created which means there is a creator and it was no accident it was built for a very deliberate person purpose and you are part of it it was built for you okay that's that's very good Okay, so how about green? Now, this is energy, it's dynamic, it's purpose and commitment. Uh, green would be, for me, tied to gravity and the theory of, which is, uh, which is that we are told about gravity, you know, the, the theory, but it's really more tied to electrostatics and density and buoyancy. Uh, but it's very purposeful and very, you know, very reliable, very deliberate. You know, you, you drop things, you can, they obviously will fall. Uh, but the, the mystery that's tied to them, we're still trying to figure out. Okay. So, so now we get on to, um, indigo and this is new thoughts, refinement. Yeah. Creative, original. And electric, you know, fast. Right. That would be, um, if I had to do indigo, it would be the overarching theme of, it's not necessarily a proof, but it's into the, it's the methodology, which is do your own research, which is, it is, when, when people get into it, it's the speed of thought. And that that drives them and their their minds start racing and they go down paths they never thought were were there possible but they don't go slowly they go very very quickly and the they're rushing into areas because it's it's brand new uh, a brand new part of the world which they never never thought existed so and they, and they figure it out for themselves again why we have such a high retention rate is that people get into it on their own and they do their own work, their own research, their own methodologies. And when they come out of the other side, one way or the other, uh, they're, you know, they're the ones that they proved it to themselves. We didn't do it for them. Okay. So on to the last one, which would be, uh, Oh, you're doing very well, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, onto the last one, which is a violet. Yes. Now okay. this, this is, low criteria it's sort of anchoring it, there's a heavy that heaviness about it permanent lines the overlord of things a containing stamina and it yeah. has a gold aspect as well
that one for me is the the overarching theme is that because you were saying it was slow we you know everyone that gets into this they never we we only agree on one thing which is the earth is measurably flat everything else we are trying to work out the best we can you know is there a dome isn't there a dome what about gravity what about you know water and you know and, and everything that's tied to it it is it the, it is the anchor which is um that you'll get this reference which is it doesn't matter what you know, the the scottish highlands right the, the the clans would always just beat the crap out of each other and again yeah, no offense but at the end of the day it didn't matter because they all would do battle together against the english right that's that's when they joined up which was i have seen this for 10 years now which is all the factions of flat earth oh yeah we'll we'll square off against each other and 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 get in all sorts of heated arguments but at the end of the day you know if there's a glober sitting across from us it's like oh yeah no no we all disagree with you yeah we all disagree with with everything that's 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 your you know, we're still trying to figure things out slowly but surely again 10 years uh but at the end of the day no it's it's still not a globe the earth is it's still measurably flat okay so so those those two indigo and violet yeah uh, are like silver and gold and yeah. they're like the vitamins for the whole the whole concept if you like right yeah, yeah. sure um, but there's another point with it as well. This mm -hmm. is like um, the, as it says in the Bible, taking a Bible verse, mm -hmm. uh, the rainbow in the sky reminds you of the, um, or it's supposed to be there, or it was said it was supposed to be there, to remind us of the covenant. Right. Yes, with God. Now, right. the covenant there's a new covenant as well, and that's not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And I think that goes pretty well for the science, because they try to tie you down to the letter, mm -hmm. yes, where, whereas uh, flat earthers look at the spirit, of the spirit of the thing from common sense. Yes. Very true. So, yes, I, I agree. So yeah, we, we when we go when we go at it, we don't go at it. It's not emotion based. It's all it's all logic. You know, it's it's not like we're we're it's it's not like a religious fervor. I mean, yes, we use religious tones and terms all the time, but we come at it from using science, the language of science. You know, it's it's not like we came out of nowhere. We just popped out of the ground as flat earthers. Everybody started out in different aspects of science in one way or the other. And we're just saying, hey, you might want to question this because it doesn't make any sense. The the stuff that you're putting out there. Well, that's the snow white of it. The white yeah. of it is the logic. Yeah, the down to yep. logic of it. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So there we have it. We have we now have the uh the the uh the color coded flat earth. Yeah, I. By the way, that is one of the most original things I have ever heard. That was that's that's brilliant. I uh, thank you for that. That's neat. I've never gotten a chance to even think about something like that. Well, I, I've I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, oh. I, I spent all day working on it. No, it's good. That's <laughs> really really good. I like it. I mean, I like it. I like it even more than the um the uh, Gilligan's Island purgatory thing that somebody brought up to me a while back. Did you, ever, did you ever hear about that one? No. Gilligan's Island was, you know, a silly show, you know, about these these castaways on an island, right? But it has a much, much deeper meaning, you know, the seven and and by that meaning there's seven castaways, right? And they represent the seven deadly sins where um Ginger was vanity, uh Marianne was envy, um, the the rich guy was obviously um um greed greed yes his wife was um sloth because she didn't want to do anything right. the skip the skipper was two of them he was gluttony because he was so big and he was wrath because he was always beating gilligan with his hat yeah. and gilligan was the seventh one he was actually the devil dressed in red 
and he was the one that kept everyone from leaving the island and it was purgatory it was brilliant it's like wow that is that is something because yeah he was always the reason they never freaking left he was the one that actually was torturing them and uh, the rest of them were the the seven deadly sins it's like wow that's pretty good well well, well, well where, where you say there was seven there was actually eight yeah so it's it's the same as the snow white and the seven dwarves really yeah 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 kind of kind of fun but yeah i loved your color thing that's that's great really really good stuff what else how would you have a by the way i don't want to i, I want to make sure that uh we when we sign off we sign off do you have a clock on your side do you know how how much time we have left um i can i can kind of work it out i think we've got about 20 minutes left okay what what do you what do you got left huh what 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 yeah. else do you want to talk about oh um let's have a look let's have a look um anything fun <laughs> you want you want to talk about oh. the um you want to talk about the final experiment um yeah we could do um but um I, I... also that the, there's another aspect to these seven dwarves oh go ahead go ahead yeah what now um one of the things i used to give all my students you know because I'd be seeing them for, for about 40 hours or something like that. And so I, I would all, I'd always start with the recipe of the day. Yes. And it was only one re lesson and it was a recipe that would last them the whole, the whole time. Yes? Okay. And I think the recipe of the day is, is a good one for, for anyone that's, um, that's, that's new to flat earth. And, and wants to progress with it okay so so you need this recipe to to carry on yeah? okay and this 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 um this recipe is a recipe of qualities that would that are very useful for approaching this subject okay okay so i've forgotten i've forgotten how i used to say it but uh, you take um you take one spoonful of care, yes? Yeah. Yeah. You take uh, uh, two spoonfuls of patience, yes? Yes. You need, you need patience. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you 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 take like um uh a good ounce of understanding, yes? Yep. You add all these ingredients together, so understanding and um, a couple of cubes of humility. Yes, you need that one as well. Yep. Okay. Then you can move on to things like um, charity with others. Yes, mm -hmm. and the way. The way you share these things and hope yes hope that people you know uh get to see the idea yeah and finally which was i, I believe it's the seventh one um that would be to actually radiate yes to like like a presence around you of all the things that you know yes so so you hold on to all of these things and you radiate them yes and now there's there's a point where you can change the world if you change yourself and uh with your radiation yes you can actually change the world the other two things that are adjoined with this would be uh belief you need some belief in, in this yeah not a great deal but you need some belief um to get you going anyway and you, you need to be alive with it yes and in your case perhaps uh just 
completely passionate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that was yeah, the recipe of the day. Wow, Yeah. that's really good. Those, those are those are awesome. Great, great choices. Yeah, well, it's, it's not exactly a Harvey Warbanger, but... Um... <laughs> Do people still order those? Huh? Do, do you have you? When's the last time you had one of those, a Harvey Wallbagger? <laughs> oh, quite some time ago. Yeah, I don't know if I I don't know if I've ever ordered one by name. But thank you for that reference. That's good. Yeah, I think we've got about ten minutes left. Okay. Yeah. So, um, anything else you want to bring up? Yes. Um. Well, yeah, let's let's talk about the Antarctica thing really quick because you know the you know the trolls. I will give them credit that they're actually making an effort to to actually go out and do finally. It should be called the final experiment because yeah, you're finally doing one. It's because we've been doing them for years. You've never done any, and then it's like oh, and the, the this one, it's like oh, and we're gonna drag some of you with us. It's like all right, whatever. It doesn't matter what happens down there for me because. 99% of the people get, that get into flat earth don't get into it because of the Antarctic sun. And I've tried to remind people, it's like that experiment down there has zero to do with anything, you know, tied to physics, anything tied to the curvature and anything tied to any of the space programs. Now you could say, well, light optics or physics, like whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It has nothing to do with gravity. How about that? Um, Which is the big one. So it doesn't, I, I, hey, I love that Witsit and Jaren are going to be there. Fantastic. Great. I mean, I, I think it might be a little premature considering they're not leaving until what, December, which is after the election, you know, the election goes down. So we'll see if anyone's going anywhere. But uh, no, it, it's not, I am not going to lose a freaking uh, ounce of sleep because I was one of the first guys to bring it up years ago. I said, I, the people ask, hey, what's the weakest point of the flat earth? I go, it's the Antarctic sun. I go, optically, you can't do it with one light source. Not really. I mean, you it would have to be tricky. You'd have to use more than one light source. I'm not saying it's not impossible. You just can't do it with one physical sun. But it doesn't really... But I also reminded people years ago, I said, it doesn't matter because nobody goes to Antarctica ever for anything. And the only people that are down there are military for the most part. So I was like, who cares? It's a push. No, And a it's... few tourists. Yeah, a few tourists. It's never, it has never hurt us in the past. It's like, what? This, again, the, the trolls are treating it's like this is a brand new thing, right? It's like, oh, the Antarctic Sun. It's like, what? You think that no photographer has ever written me or called me and said, I'm pretty sure there's an Antarctic Sun 24 hours, you know, 24 7. I've heard this for years. Nobody, never was a sticking point because the general, what I'm going to try to remind people, the big reason why this is not going to get much traction, I mean, it might get a little media traction, but that's it, is the general public does not understand it one way or the other. They just don't. They didn't even understand the Jaron laser experiment at the end of Behind the Curve. I know because I kept talking to them. I said, they said, well, it was bad. I go, do you understand what was supposed to happen? No, but it was bad, right? I go, you're an idiot. <laughs> get away from me. Right. You, you don't you don't understand at all. The, the general public doesn't un, doesn't understand much about science deliberately because we deliberately do not push science and physics because we want to keep people just smart enough to drive cars and go to work, but not smart enough to answer questions. Um, sorry, real quick, jump back over to the space program. It's the reason why the soft space suit. You got away with it. Why the Americans put the soft space suit on television. Anyone that knows anything about physics knows that spacesuit should just expand to fill, you know, the pressure difference. It should turn into a parade float and tip over. Yeah, but we know that that the spacesuits actually do work because they've been tested on the moon. Exactly. Exactly. And Yeah, which is why so I, is isn't I, this circular reasoning? I, yeah, I have told people. I've, in fact, I, I remember uh, specifically this group of um, big group of, of people. I was on stage, and I go, "Hey, people in." Sweden, Stockholm. I go, why do you think the Americans went to the moon? I know why we think we went to the moon because we're, we're Americans, right? We, you know, we're delusional. But, but, and, you know, wave the flag, go team. Why do you think we went to the moon, right? And they all said the same, what you just said. It's like, well, because it was on television and, and your, your media would never lie about something like that. And I go, you, do you know us at all? Like, we lie about everything. 
if we can, if it helped, if it benefits us in some way, the Americans are going to lie about it. I, I've, I mean, I've just watched a, a video called The Matrix, and and apparently, um, our history started really about five hundred years ago, and that's when they gave us the five religions five hundred years ago. Sure. I don't know if that's true, but it's it's something to think about. But it, it, but but be, be, before we, we've only got a minute or so left. Oh yeah, go go ahead, go ahead, so go ahead. I just wanted to bring up the last subject, yeah. which was um, meteorites. What do you think they are? Um, I've been asked this since day one. I just think they're um, they're rocks or metal that's thrown into the atmosphere. I do think they might be physical. They might be less just lights on the ceiling. But the bigger question, or or they could be just rocks that you throw into an aquarium. The bigger the bigger question there is: if we have six billion smartphones on this world, why is there not a single video of a rock going from sky to ground? Not one. Yeah. Decades, decades. We've had this. It's like at the very least. Someone on a cruise ship should see one hitting the water, right? It doesn't have to be very big. We see every once in a while we say, oh, there's a crater. Oh, look, there's a crater. Show well, me a video. Wasn't wasn't there a story about someone being killed killed or something, being hit by a um, microscopic a meteor. uh, meteorite? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Again, show me a video of it. Even by accident. <laughs> Even by accident, there should be a video of something going from the air to the ground. And yeah. while we're at it, why is the moon, why are all the craters of the moon, which are huge, why are they all coming in at 90 degree angles? And, and right? they, they can fake that as well. They can fake um, meteorites coming in. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But they, but they, and, they and, but what I like is the one from um, uh, Vibes of the Cosmos. Yeah. And they, they say all the chemicals that go up to the atmosphere right. rise up to the atmosphere and in the upper atmosphere, yeah. Yeah, they start coalescing and they form solid objects and these sol solid objects come back down. Sure. A bit like sure. hailstones. There you go. Or Or one more, which is if there are meteors, law of averages says that a satellite would have been hit by one by now. Never, never's happened, right? And and again, it's the whole premise of the they're movie. Gravity. Fast. They're once, the oh, there you go, there you go. Once a satellite gets hit, starts spinning. Law of averages, it's going to cascade into another satellite, and the whole sky is going to be wrecked. All the satellites will eventually be wrecked. It's never ever happened. It's the premise of the movie Gravity. Nobody wants to talk about it. Trolls drive me insane. They're they're just freaking robots to me. Yeah, they, Trolls are just NPCs. Sorry, go ahead. The, the images and the pictures of um, the of all the satellites and all the space junk that is up there, right? I mean, that's that's incredible. Oh, I know, it, isn't it it's beautiful? It's surprising how we get any sunlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Again, the the faith, the science has become scientism. The 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 nerds and everything. The faith. There was a girl from Ireland. You know, I said, you know, the Americans stopped going in 1972 to the moon, supposedly. I go, when are we going back? And she looked at me with the most glassy eyes. And she goes, soon. We're going back soon. And it's like, yeah, I've heard that, right? I've heard that ever since every every president since Reagan has said that. And it's never happened. I go, we're we're way down the line there. When are we going back? Sometimes so, anyway. in the next hundred years. Yeah, it's it's it. We kick the can down the road, and the general public just gets dumber and dumber and dumber to where. I look. I, I will say this. Let, let me close with this. I'm I'm glad that I'm on the outside looking in than to be them. I would rather be on this side and be. I know ignorance is bliss, and I know they're probably content being sheep. But man, it once you get on this side, it's like woo. I mean, yeah. Well, that's okay for you, Mark. But as for me, I'm not 100 percent convinced that the earth is flat only 99 percent okay. okay all right I, I, i've always left that one percent open just in case just in case sure just in case we you know i get hit by a curve somewhere there you go nice i may i may steal that line that's awesome that's awesome well thank you it was it was nice uh it was nice talking to you um what's this called by the way is there a name for this podcast um 
interview with Mark Sargent. Okay. <laughs> where, where, where? A color, colorful interview with Mark. Oh, colorful interview. That's good. That's also that's very clever. What? Um. Uh. Where are you anyway? I'm in Portsmouth in England. Is that west side or east side? That's right at the bottom. That that's if you know where the Isle of Wight is. I do.